I spent two nights in my bed in eight months. It takes a lot of self-control to keep that door closed 11 hours a day. Plain and simple, you have to dedicate yourself. Westbound 272, Westbound 270. You're trying to provide the country with what it needs in a timely and efficient manner. Is it physically taxing? More mentally taxing than anything else. You're responsible for a lot of people's safety. Our planet and our civilizations are changing faster than ever before. Join me as I travel the globe talking to startup founders using cloud technologies to make our world more interesting, accessible and livable. These are the entrepreneurs that are creating the future we will live in. This is Now Go Build. The open road in the American Southwest. There's truly nothing like it. Growing up in a big city, I was always fascinated by the rugged individualism of the American trucker. The sense of freedom, breathtaking views, hauling goods from coast to coast and being at the center of the global supply chain. But behind that fantasy is a deeper story about one of the hardest jobs in America and an extremely complex network of producers, manufacturers and distributors that work together to deliver goods to consumers around the world. With global supply chain problems reaching its peak, it has me wondering how cloud technology and AWS can play a role in making trucking more efficient and less demanding of the drivers behind the wheel. That curiosity brought me to Arizona, where Too Simple believes autonomy to be the answer. Lee and Brad are two supply chain experts who bring first-hand knowledge as to how autonomous trucking could be the future of the global supply chain. My first job was driving a delivery truck. I thought I'd drive a truck for a year, but that winded up being a 35-year career with <laughs> UPS. So got to know the supply chain and trucking industry on the inside. There's much more to the trucking world than just the truck. It's all about supply chain and moving things around. That's exactly right. It is a holistic ecosystem that has a number of different constraints that are attached to it, that you're always looking for optimized networks and how we can keep product moving and make our service commitments. Yeah. For 20 years, um, I worked at one of North America's largest trucking companies. And really there, I got to learn a lot about drivers and the network of freight. How does, how does the freight work together? What most people don't understand is 97% of companies in the trucking industry have 20 trucks or less. It is a very fragmented industry. Yeah. So what are the biggest challenges these days in, in the world of trucking? The American Trucking Association says right now that there's a shortage of 80,000 drivers. Over the next 10 years, we'll, we'll increase that shortage well over 100,000 more. Some of these firms have over 100% turnover. If you buy a product, there's an 87% chance that that came on a truck. If you don't have a truck driver, that truck's not moved. And the challenge is the type of work it is. I mean, we have this very romantic view about the, the, the American truck driver, and mm, mm, but that's a pretty hard job. The typical over-the-road driver is gonna spend seven to 12 days away from home, come back home, and then two days later, go do that same thing again. What we think technology does is opens up a door to improve that work-life balance and bring in some, some drivers that are really focused on local applications, consistent jobs, first mile, making the pickup, making the delivery. By having that middle mile done autonomously, you create more jobs where we're gonna need more drivers doing that local delivery work and that pickup work because you're always gonna have the driver in that part of the ecosystem. So it's not just that you replace drivers with technology, you create a new job market. People that actually do want to drive a truck but would like to be home at night. Plus the expertise of the driver is really in the first and the last mile. Yeah, when you look at the professional truck driver, there's a craft that that they perform. And so there's an experience element that you can't really replace. We will be able to transition jobs from that middle mile component, from yeah. that, that 
that unknown of where I'm going to be every day to a forced multiplication of first and last mile jobs, mm -hmm. which we believe are the jobs that this mm -hmm. next generation of driver is really wanting. I think autonomous trucking is going to be the most transformative event that's hit the supply chain in decades. But just how does a 40-ton truck drive itself? I pop the hood with Ursin and Graham to see how they develop a commercially ready, fully autonomous driving solution. So this is where you guys build your trucks? This is where we bring our base trucks and then we outfit them with our technology, our sensors. This is what we go on the road with. Impressive. There is no OEM that will create or produce uh, trucks with the sensors, with the compute on them. We start putting in all the sensors, power that's needed to support the compute. With the power, with the cameras, with the sensors, around 2,000 feet of cabling go into the truck. Oh, wow. And they come with the sleeper, the bed, the fridges, everything in. Yeah. So when they come in, we take all that out yeah. and then install all our equipment. There's short-range LiDARs on each side of the truck. On the front, where the hood mirrors used to be, we added a short-range LiDAR to each side. And those two, for this side, and the symmetric version of them on the other side, cover the local vicinity around the truck. It becomes extremely important where there are pedestrians that can actually come close to the truck. The rack that you see at the top, all the cameras specifically placed at that point, and our long-range LiDAR is also on top of that rack. As you can imagine, that visibility is really strong towards the forward of the truck. So what I'm seeing here? The power distribution board with the equalizer on here, taking all of the harnessing from the batteries, equalizes it and converts it into power that the compute unit can use inside the truck. So the power is required to run those servers in the back of the truck, as well as power up everything else. But the cameras are 4K and, and they are very high bandwidth. So all of that data is coming to the compute and has to be real-time processed, right? A lot of GPU processing, deep learning. No, oh, okay. So there's a significant amount of networking in, in, the, in, truck the, in the truck as well. Yes. Even the uh, connectivity with the cloud, because we do have collaborative mapping, yeah. right? Emergency situations, roadside assistance, roadside blockage. All of this information is pulled to the cloud and pulled back down to the trucks that are on the same lane. Truck drivers have one of the highest rates of on-the-job injury in America. The ability for an autonomous truck to send and receive data in real time ensures a safer and more efficient journey. Beyond the sensors on these vehicles sits a complex set of technologies, including deep learning, real-time analytics, GPU processing, all running in the cloud. Ursin introduced me to Robert to discuss the autonomous process and how real-time mapping plays a role. I ended up leading engineering for a, a company that was a pioneer in building HD maps. That was the first excursion into LiDAR-based high-definition maps. And then I led the autonomous driving effort for mapping for TomTom, and then okay. that, that led me to come here. So guys, can you give me a sort of view of all the different components and how they're stitched together? Of course, what the hardware essentially is giving to the software in the truck is the sensor data. The sensor data goes into our autonomy software where there are specific big building blocks. One of them is perception. And perception is essentially taking the raw sensor data and turns that into metadata about what's around us. So perception basically makes sense of what the objects are around it, and exactly. then you move the objects into the prediction engine. Correct. After that, that goes into planning. Based on the prediction of that future, plans our trajectory around those obstacles. The last part controls, taking that trajectory and speed profile information, turns that into the actuator information and sends it back to the truck so that the truck can steer, accelerate, so on and so forth. One of the things that actually support this entire pieces of software that are stitched together as autonomy is localization and the HD map. What is the HD map? We source from the environment through all of our sensors, right? And what we're after on the other side is a very tiny compressed representation of the environment that this module can use. We take this data, we move it up into Amazon's S3. Then we have a process involving microservices. 
at the end produces a uh, encoded map. So that's the process that we have to originate a map. The process that keeps the map up to date receives snippets of data from one of these truck, the actual truck runs that's consuming the map. The outcome of this is that we make a sliver change to the map and it's updated to the vehicles that are in operation. But you want every truck in the neighborhood to know right. yeah. that it, there is an accident at this moment. It, on exactly. The road. This one originates the baseline for the map. This one keeps it live, fresh, up to date. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And another place that we use this data is updating our simulation libraries, right? Our software runs millions of miles, in some cases, on the cloud before it is even approved for the road. There's another side of that, the state information and health information through our trucks in the network, pushing that data to the cloud, and then presenting it in dashboards of what we call TU Connect to either the customer side or the operational centers on our internal side. Autonomous driving started. So we're coming up to our unprotected left turn. I see a pedestrian off to the right. The traffic signal is red, so we are stopped. I see one car across the intersection that we'll have to yield to once the light is green. All right, so the traffic signal has turned green. We need to wait until it's entirely clear before we can make our unprotected left-hand turn. Okay. Our trucks are infinitely patient. Yeah. So we are taking this turn slow and wide. Don't you love it when it just works? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, a driver would just have tons of experience knowing how to guess whether these cars are going too fast or not. Here, you have the luxury of data. Yes. It is all of the sensors at the same time sort of overlapping the data. This is what the LiDAR is picking up right now as we're driving. LiDAR is good for about 200 meters, so it's not the LiDAR that allows us to see a thousand meters. It's a combination of many things, especially the cameras. How we've placed them and how we use them is what allows us to see farther than any other autonomous vehicle. Yeah, of course. And now our exit has come up. We have disengaged. We're going to make a U-turn, get back on the 10, and head back. Boom, wonderful. Right. You guys build a fantastic product. How do you see this going in the coming, let's say, three, four, five years? The thing that I deeply be believe is that we're on the verge of a massive transformation of global logistics and coordination and the perturbation caused by COVID brought about the weaknesses in the system and really a global supply chain system <laughs> needs reliability and resilience. And automation in many aspects of it are going to restore our uh, logistics and provide a foundation of how products move about the globe. By converting the middle mile to autonomy, right? Mm -hmm. and, and no driver trucks essentially, that will make the driver's lives also easier and, and work with the technology together. It's not just about building an autonomous truck. It is about building the whole network. That's and exactly right. It's, it's an autonomous driver. But what it really does is expand commerce. If you look to where we had pain during the pandemic, seaports with more than 100 cargo ships that were lined up, even if we could have docked everyone, we didn't have enough trucks that would have moved that product. The autonomous trucking solution opens up that opportunity to increase that capacity. You're able to run it 24 hours a day without having that constraint of what the human driver has to do is, I have to shut down. If you take that out, all of a sudden we can double what's getting moved between these ports. When you double the capacity, it becomes a growth catalyst yeah. that we haven't seen. And if you think about the practical application, uh, produce from Southern California, trying to get it to the grocery stores in the state of Texas, in the autonomous world, can do it at a much faster rate. And it's better for the consumer. They're gonna get produce fresher, yeah. and it's gonna stay longer on the shelves. And there's also benefits for our environment. Because of how the technology works, we're able to operate that truck in a more efficient way, which generates over a 10% fuel economy savings. 
there's a lot of cost savings to be realized from this technology. Mm -hmm. Whether you're talking about fuel efficiency or the ability to rapidly scale alternative fuels or zero emission fuels from a utilization perspective, being able to utilize that truck 24 hours a day. Beyond that, then you start talking about optimization and network optimization, mm -hmm. and then what it does to the work on the, the first and last mile and how it will expand mm -hmm. that category of driving job. As they put together that network and they math that out, and then here comes the autonomous driver, that's when you're gonna get these optimized networks that's mm -hmm. gonna increase capacity. We're gonna need more drivers and more technicians and more CDL qualified people working in that supply chain than we've needed before. Once again, cloud technology is driving the future of a rapidly evolving industry. These advances offer the potential to revolutionize the entire trucking ecosystem, transforming the role of the truck driver to keep pace with an ever-changing world. The application of AWS technologies supports this vital industry in their pursuit of better efficiency, safety and ultimately a more dependable supply chain.